Real quick, just for those of you that are, you know, very, very new to affiliate marketing, and don't sweat it if you are. Listen, we all started, you know, on the first rung on the ladder. That's just the way it is. It's no big deal if you've never done any marketing before. you got to start somewhere. I want to go over some terms that I'm going to be using throughout this course, and these are terms that you definitely need to know if you're doing pretty much any kind of marketing, but especially with ClickBank. One is conversion, and I'm using the example of a 1% conversion. And by the way, a 1% conversion is a pretty typical conversion, so that's average. But what that means is that out of 100 visitors, you make one sale. So 100 people, I know these numbers, if, if you're new to this, this is going to scare you, but this is the real world, okay? Out of 100 people that come to the site, one person buys that product. Let me give you this information in another way. That means that if there is a $20 commission to get those that one sale, right? 20 cents per click breaks even. Okay, now I'm going to let that settle in for just a minute. Think about that. Let's explain it again. Uh, at a 1% conversion, 100 people come to visit the site. One person buys. If that product pays you $20, that means you could pay up to $0.20 cents per click and still break even. That means anything below $0.20 cents per click, you would be able to make a profit off of that. Anything above $0.20 cents a click, and you would lose money sending people to that offer. Okay, Because this $0.20 cents per click, remember we're getting 100 visitors. So we've got 100 people coming there. That's basically $20, right, if it's $0.20 cents per click. Well, with one sale, I'm going to make $20. So $0.20 cents a click causes me to break even. Conversion is, it's a word that you definitely want to be very familiar with. Another one, ClickBank Gravity. By the way, if you see that CB, that stands for ClickBank. You'll see that a lot. Uh, gravity. Gravity is a way that ClickBank kind of categorizes products that are there. Uh, it's a way to show how many affiliates are selling that product. Gravity is not always the only you know factor that you want to look at, but what gravity is useful for is when you go to the marketplace at ClickBank, and if you've never been there, don't worry about it. We're going to go check it out later on. But if you go to the marketplace on ClickBank, all of the products are going to have a gravity listed there. Now that gravity, again, it tells you how many other affiliates are selling that product? So if there's a lot of them, that means there's a lot of people selling it. What you don't want to do is make the mistake of thinking if there's a lot of people selling it that you don't want to get involved in it because competition is your friend. If there's competition, that means there's a market. All you have to do is outmarket those people. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do is outmarket them. With ClickBank Gravity, you want to look for products that have a greater 100 or greater gravity and have a commission of $30 or more. This is just my rule of thumb because, yes, you can make some money if there's a, you know something that has a gravity of like 20 or 30. But the problem is if the gravity is that low, there's not a high demand, and we're looking for something that has high demand because we want a lot of traffic. This is, again, my friend, it's all numbers. Once you find out, hey, this is working, you know, you're going to be doing it on a lower scale, you want room so that you can scale it up. Well, if you've picked a, a product to dominate and you go in there and Bam, you knock them dead, right? Because th that particular product only gets like 10 clicks a day. <laughs> well, if you're already testing it out and you're like, hey, I'm getting 10 clicks a day and I'm making one sale, it's great. This is 10% conversion. 
that's fantastic. But if all that product ever gets is 10 clicks a day, you're not going to really go anywhere with it, right? So you want something that's in demand and going to have a lot of traffic. Now, here are some other pretty generic terms, but these are things that you definitely do want to know. PPC is pay-per-click. That is the traffic method that we're going to use in this training uh, course. Okay, that's AdWords, for example. That just means that you pay every time somebody clicks on your ad. Your ad shows up. It shows up whenever people look for certain terms. You know, they go to Google and they look for, you know, how to play the guitar or whatever. Your ad shows up. You don't pay just because your ad shows, but you do pay when they click on the ad. You can pay $0.10. Cents. You can pay $10. It just depends on, you know, how difficult that market is, how popular it is, how competitive it is, and a lot of other factors that determine, Google determines kind of how much you have to pay for that, how much you've actually bid on it, for one. Uh, next one is CPC. This is cost per click. That is the kind of, uh, it's kind of the same thing as the pay-per-click, but uh, it's used in, like, determining factors. Pay-per-click just means you actually do pay to get the clicks. Cost per click is how much you're paying to get those clicks. So cost per click, you could have a CPC of $0.25. Cents. So if I say I've got a CPC of $0.25, cents, that means every time somebody clicks on my ad, I pay $0.25, cents, right? Then we've got CPM. M is actually a Roman numeral for a thousand. This means cost per thousand impressions. So, like, let's say you're paying ten dollars per thousand impressions. If you get ten thousand impressions, you're paying a hundred dollars. The thing with CPM, though, is CPM is used on the content network, which we'll get into a little bit later on. With CPM, you don't pay per click. You pay just because your ad showed. So CPM, generally, you're going to pay less because, you know, there's no, with with uh, pay per click, you only pay when they click on your ad, right? So, you know, at least I got somebody to come. Well, with CPM, it showed up, and you don't even really know if they saw the ad because it could have been off in the corner or something. Maybe they never scrolled down. You don't really know, so... Uh, CPM is generally less, but if you've got a really killer, if you've got a good ad that is working on a pay-per-click basis and you know it converts really well, then you might consider, and we're going to talk about that later on, you might consider putting it on a uh, content network. CTR, this is click-through rate. What that comes down to, it's kind of like conversion. If a 100 people see my ad or my ad is shown a hundred times, I should say, because sometimes people, you know, people don't go to Google and do a search and they don't look at all the ads, not all the time at least. They scan through and something catches their eye and then they click on that one. Well, CTR means if my ad is displayed a hundred times and one person clicks on it, I've got a 1% CTR. Now that's pretty low for, for click through. If a, if my ad shows 100 times and five people click on it, that's a 5% click-through rate, and that's a lot better. That's something that's a little more typical. Uh, if you've got a good campaign, if you've got a good ad, the headline's good and it pulls, okay, then 5% is really good. If you're over 2%, I would say, then you're doing all right. Under 2%, you need to do some work on the ad. Uh, and, again, we'll talk a little bit about that kind of stuff later on when we get to that particular section. But these are some terms that I'm going to be using through this training that you need to be familiar with. Here are some tips and tools. These are just for this particular section, this module that we're going to be utilizing. Okay, You need Excel or OpenOffice Calc, which is a spreadsheet. It's a free spreadsheet that you can download. Just Google OpenOffice. There will be a download link there if you don't already have Excel. I'm an avid Excel user. I love it uh, for doing, you know, tracking and comparisons. And you're going to find out that I use it like crazy in this course. But if you don't have Excel, you just go Google Open Office, download it. Calc is the program. And, again, it's free. It's an open source 
spreadsheet program. It works pretty much like Excel. Now, they're, they're not going to be identical, so some of the things you're going to see me do, you're not going to be able to do them the same way, but you should be able to pull it off if you, you know, go through the help file. But we let Excel do all the tough work for us. You're going to see a spreadsheet that I bring up here uh, later that, I mean, it just it, it allows you to just punch in some numbers and boom, it tells you, you know, what's going to work and what's not going to work. Another thing is buyfood.com. You can get a paid account there. I think they still have a trial available. And for our purposes, uh, you know what they used to do? I forget it's been so long. They used to do, like you could pay a couple of bucks and get a three-day trial or something like that. But anyhow, what it what allows you to do is do a lot of search uh, research on Google to see who's advertising, what keywords they're using. And at this phase, you can see other stuff there too, like how much they're spending and uh, their ads and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very powerful tool, very handy. At this phase, though, all we really need is a way to do, you know, like find keywords and get keyword suggestions. So that, for the most part, you can get with the free account there at SpyFu. So just go to SpyFu.com. You don't have to sign up yet. As a matter of fact, what I sug uh, should suggest is at this point in the game, if you don't already have an account there, don't get one because later on we will be able to utilize some of those advanced features and you'll want to maybe sign up for that trial. Go ahead and do your research right then and then wait until you know, you're know you making a whole bunch of money and doing this regularly before you subscribe to them. Uh, another thing that you can do is Google's keyword research tool. In fact, it really, again, at this point in the game, it gives you enough information for, uh, you know, what we're trying to accomplish, which basically is getting keyword ideas and getting an idea for how much it's going to cost to advertise for those keywords and how much traffic they're going to get us.